Hi, welcome to Lagoons Do It Better TV, where we provide you with bite-sized segments that help your lagoon do it better. Today we're on the road. We're here at the University of Wisconsin Research Park in Madison, Wisconsin, with our friends Aquafix. John Deneen here is the uh, technical sales uh, head for the wastewater department at Aquafix, and we're going to talk today a little bit about lagoon algae. So welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. So first, just big picture. Let's talk about algae. Why is it an issue in the environment? Well, in terms of wastewater, uh, operators generally have problems with it in terms of TSS and their effluent. And so when we get brought in to help an operator deal with uh, algae and lagoons, usually TSS is the biggest thing. Um, the other reason I think it's important, it's usually a sign that there's more going on below the surface than just the algae that you're seeing um, when you look at the pond. So what do you find typically that causes this algae growth? What's driving this? Well, algae will show up pretty much anywhere where there's water and lots of nutrients. So when you're talking about wastewater treatment lagoons, you've got both those requirements met and usually in excess on the nutrient side. Um, <clears throat> they're some of the oldest life forms on the planet. They're evolved to survive in, in very difficult to live locations. And so they seek out and, and thrive in those types of spots and uh, wastewater lagoons just happen to be one of them. What do you know about mm -hmm. what drives the growth of different types of algae? The climate's a big thing, the action of the water, level of mixing, whether it's flowing, the types of substrates available, um, for example, rock lined, um, clay bottom, synthetic bottom, how much mixing there is, wind action, I mean, all those types of things play a big role. The types of nutrients that are in excess and abundance, uh, those are really big factors. Um, and then just the, the climate and the location you're at and uh, what's adapted to live in that climate. So what's when you get a call typically for a lagoon algae problem, what, what's the typical algae you see? Uh, in terms of wastewater lagoons, it's usually just your pretty common uh, planktonic green algae. Uh, once in a while we'll get some filamentous uh, matting algae, uh, but usually we're just dealing with the, the planktonic green algae. Uh, the occasional uh, issue with like a, a blue-green algae, uh, microcystis for example, something that has a little bit of toxin associated with it. Uh, yeah, those are kind of the basics that we deal with. What about duckweed? We get a lot of calls about duckweed, people get concerned about it. Um, why is it an issue, typically? Uh, duckweed may not always be an issue. I guess that's a, a good starting point for this conversation. Uh, it, it doesn't always cause any issue. Uh, when it does cause an issue, probably the thing we run into the most is an aesthetics issue. The operator just mm -hmm. doesn't like it, um, just because he doesn't like the way it looks there. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of more practical issues, the biggest one that comes to mind for me would be the impact that it has on UV penetration. So operators that rely on UV light to disinfect their water, um, you lose some of that when you have a full coating of duckweed. So your fugal coliforms essentially go up. Oh, yeah. Okay. So how, how do you recommend uh, mitigating duckweed issues? Uh, our recommendation, uh, the first thing you can do and probably one of the most effective is to increase the amount of mixing. So duckweed doesn't like to establish in water that's moving. Um, so a well-mixed lagoon is always gonna be less susceptible to duckweed. Um, that's not always practical. You may not always have uh, that much control. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> we do like to focus on sludge reduction um, for algae or duckweed type issues. Um, those can can certainly help the long-term health of a lagoon. Um, in some cases, an operator may choose to do like a chemical aquatic herbicide, uh, something like clipper would be an example. Okay. Um, those are kind of the common control methods. Let's go back to algae for a second. What are the typical methods for dealing with algae? For algae, we do like to start with uh, sludge reduction program. Uh, mm -hmm. That's one of those things that really benefits the long-term health of a pond, makes it less susceptible to algae blooms in the future. Mm -hmm. um, when you're needing to deal with an immediate issue and get rid of algae, uh, 
I guess first and foremost, you're always going to have to incorporate some form of algicide. Uh, kind of one of the old school ones was copper sulfate. Um, the new generation of that type would be a chelated copper. Um, those chelated coppers, they stay suspended in the water column for a much longer period of time, mm -hmm. meaning you can get away with using less. And we always recommend that people do minimize the amount of copper sulfate that they're using, chelated or not. Um, because that copper accumulates in the lagoon. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't leave with the effluent, it just goes down in the sludge. Um, when you get to a certain threshold of copper in the sludge, that can really start causing some issues. Mm -hmm. um, we like to pair one of the algicides um, with our Ponzilla, which is a biocatalyst that helps increase the effectiveness of those, ad um, those algicides. Uh, so it helps degrade the dead algae mm -hmm. and it helps uh, get a better kill um, so you get less wounded algae and more fully dead algae sure sure so to sort of summate it would you say like you're gonna you want to treat the cause of the algae yeah if you have a short-term need to get rid of algae then use the algicides but ultimately you're but treating by treating the cause you're going to stop it from happening in the long run yeah Right, so the you're going to use sort of the sludge reducers to, to stop that nutrient source, right? To, to to break down the nutrient source, and and different things like that. Um, talk to me a little bit about the application of these things. You know, if you had somebody come to you tomorrow and said, "I got a real bad algae problem. I'm getting 50 milligrams per liter in my TSS. My permit says 30. How do I take care of this? How are you going to approach that, and how would that be applied in the field?" Well, since we like to minimize the, the amount of chelated copper being used, I guess the first thing I would do is recommend that they look at uh, one of the peroxide-based algicides um, and pairing that with our Ponzilla. So there's a variety of uh, peroxide-based algicides. They work by releasing peroxide. Um, that helps kill the algae. Um, we pair that up with the Ponzilla. Again, that helps better digest or better degrade the algae so you're not contributing to a sludge layer mm -hmm. and it also helps increase the percent of the algae killed. Usually what would happen is they'd make a tank mix of it so they would add some of the um, algicide to a tank, they'd go out in a boat, maybe a pontoon, um, they would actually spray it over the surface of the water um, and just make passes up and down the lagoon um, spraying that algicide out um, and within a period of a week or so, they're generally seeing much better water clarity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then long term, you're going to recommend sludge reduction, bacteria, try to just improve the overall health of the pond? Yeah, that's correct. Mm -hmm. um, we do our Vitastim line of bacteria, and Vitastim is a blend of sludge eating bacteria as well as some biostimulants. Mm -hmm. And those biostimulants, they help. Uh, boost the rate that the bacteria can consume sludge, mm -hmm. and they also help boost the native bacteria in the lagoon as well. Okay, cool. And those come in water soluble bags, right? Pound or half pound? Yep, we do it in 30 pound pails. We put it in half pound or one pound water soluble bags. As far as adding it, it's as simple as the operator uh, walking around the corner, throwing a few bags in. Mm -hmm. um, we usually have them do it daily. Mm -hmm. uh, may do something like a couple times per week. Mm -hmm. But yeah, water soluble, just toss them in. Cool, cool. And you've had good success with these methodologies? Yeah, we usually target a 20% reduction in the sludge thickness over a single um, treatment session. We usually focus our efforts in the warm weather. So when the water temperatures are higher, that's when you get the most active bacteria mm -hmm. um, and that's when you get the fastest sludge degradation. So we usually start in the late spring, go all the way through to the fall, mm -hmm. and we usually target about 20%. We'll tailor the treatment plan based on what the customer's goals are mm -hmm. um, and what they're wanting to achieve and how quickly they're needing to achieve it. Great, great. Well, thanks for talking to us today, John. Um, if you want more information about Aquafix, go to teamaquafix.com. Um, also, you can reach out to us and we'll be happy to pass along John's contact information if you've got any questions about anything you've heard today. Um, we have our own uh, resources online. We have our blog. We have our this video blog, obviously, and a, and a Facebook group where we're trying to connect operators with operators so you guys can help each other out to improve your lagoon and help it to do it better. If you go to our website and go to tpemb.com forward slash LDIB, 
put your information in there. We'll send you a free Lagoons Do a Better camo hat. Uh, and we'll make sure we'll keep you up to date with uh, all of our content going forward. So thanks a lot, and we'll see you next time.